Hello, and welcome to Sports Culture, the show that blends the world of sports and pop culture. I'm Dayton Abbott. Now, without further delay, let's get into our first segment, sports. And in sports this week, we're going to be talking about basketball and more specifically about the NBA in-season tournament, which has been running throughout the regular season. Teams have been winning, teams have been losing, and it's been dictated in the standings. And now we are down to eight teams. Actually, correction, we are down to four and the final two with the championship taking place tonight as I'm recording this at 6.30 p.m. Mountain. Um, between the Indiana Pacers and the Los Angeles Lakers. Um, two teams that you wouldn't think were going to be in the finals of this NBA in-season tournament. Um, but here they are. And so let's talk about the pros and the cons of the tournament because it is the first year. 2023 will be the first year of the NBA in-season tournament. And who knows if they're going to bring it back for next year um, based off these pros and cons. But I'm assuming it's going to be um, running for years and years and years to come because of the buzz and the excitement that is generated so let's let's get into it i like to start with the cons before we get to the pros so we'll we'll get the bad out of the way before the good um so first con um with this nba in season tournament the players are competing harder than they ever have it feels like we are watching amazing incredible basketball and with harder play it just leads to more injury early on or the potential for injury early on whether it's a wrist sprain whether it's an ankle sprain um, whether it's even worse than that, torn ligaments, torn ACLs, that type of thing. Um, there is that chance for injury, uh, when players play harder. So that's the first con that I, that came to mind when this NBA in-season tournament came up. Second con is that players are getting paid slash incentivized on top of their salary to win. Yes, these NBA players are getting paid millions of dollars with their salary and then if they win this NBA in-season tournament, they are getting a $500,000 cash bonus, I believe. Um, don't quote me on that. I do know they are getting a monetary or a cash prize for winning this tournament. Every player on the team would. Um, so that's another kind of con is the rich get richer if that's your type of thing. Now, to the pros. There is a lot of them. Um, that is just the slight cons is injury and more money. The first pro creates a more fun slash exciting way for fans to stay engaged early in the season instead of say flipping their television to football or hockey. Um, I think this is a great way for the NBA to bring in more fans or to bring fans back um, and faster pace of play and players buying in just creates a more exciting fun style of play. Um, it, secondly, I guess because my second point was encourages the players to play harder and create a more entertaining product which I already kind of told you about. So second point is it brings tourism to Las Vegas where the semifinals and the finals are being held for the tournament. Um, Vegas has always been rumored to be an expansion uh, city for the NBA. Um, and what better spot to play out the semifinals and the finals rounds? Um, it's a really exciting city. It's a lively city. Uh, the Las Vegas Aces and the WNBA play there. They just won their, they just won back-to-back -back WNBA championships. So they know basketball in that city. Um, and it's just a really good spot. So bringing tourism to Vegas is my second point. And then third, or overall, I guess, or those are my two points for the pros, um, and my two po points for the cons. And overall, um, my thoughts and consensus on this in-season tournament is that I like what I'm seeing. Um, even down to the details on the trophy, which the NBA cares about, uh, I believe they tied in 2023 the year in some way, as well as the 12 teams competing in the tournament once it gets narrowed down. Um, and the trophy itself is not an ugly looking trophy. It's actually very nice, keeping it simple, just gold and black. Um, and so we'll have to see tonight who wins between the Pacers and the Lakers. If it was up to me, um, Tyrese Halliburton for the Indiana Pacers is playing out of his mind, but you could never doubt LeBron James, the king, the goat, or the secondary coming of the goat. Some argue it's Michael Jordan. The current modern day goat is LeBron, I would say. Um, if you had to say gun to my head, or if you had to pick one between the Pacers and the Lakers, I'm just going to say Lakers can't deny LeBron. Um, so yeah, I, I see the Lakers winning the NBA in season tournament. Um, and so yeah, let's hope it continues for years to come, uh, because it's a really exciting, fun thing to watch. Uh, and now moving into the spotlight, I don't know. I'm just going to kind of like do our motions spotlight. Um, we are going to get into the walking dead my update on The Walking Dead, because I've watched quite a little bit. Um, I'm almost at the end of the fifth season or sixth season, I believe. Um, so let's give my updates on some cons and some pros and also a favorite, a character I hate and a character I love. So starting off with the cons. 
Characters lost on the show suck. Um, you get to know them, they're gone, you like others, you don't mind losing certain characters, but anytime you lose a character in a TV series, um, it sucks, and so far we've lost a couple of them uh, that I've liked, a couple that I just didn't really care for, um, but losing a character on a show anytime just sucks, um, but it's, it's necessary to advance the plot. Um, certain romantic relationships so far I like, and others I don't like. Um, certain characters I, I perceive fitting well with others, and then um, the writers perceive certain other characters doing um, fitting in another way as well. So certain romantic relationships are great, others I just disagree with. I just don't see it fitting very well, but that's we'll have to see how it lasts and how it goes. Um, and so yeah, that's my kind of second con. And then now we're gonna get into my most disliked character so far. And this is not a harsh dislike, it's just in the certain choices that this character has made. And so far that's been Maggie for me. Um, she was very caring and very, um, tough and she still is kind of tough but she's more stubborn now um she's not as empathetic it's seeming towards um not only glenn but um the group as a whole um and she just really is taking a leadership role in the group when i don't really s perceive her as a leader um i could see other characters taking that step um but it's not up to me it's up to what the writers have done and so that's been my mis most disliked character so far however the pros New characters we met through an advancing plot in a story means we get to form new bonds. Um, so characters die, characters come in. Uh, it's the pros and cons of a series, it's the pros and cons of the story. My second pro is that the plot is switching to a new enemy once again with a ton of mystery. We don't really know a whole lot, we're kind of learning through each episode, little bits and chunks and pieces, um, but there's a new character or a new sort of enemy to pin our interest on and that's what I'm also really excited about as a pro. My favorite character so far continues to be a toss-up between Glenn and Carl as um, they both still continue to be balanced characters and not only the choices they make but the way they act in the group and the development they've undergone in the series so far. Um, Glenn has just is a well-rounded individual, he can fight, he has that empathetic emotional side to him um, and Carl has become less stubborn, more empathetic, more caring, uh, more forgiving, he's shown a ton of maturity in the series. Um, which I really enjoyed his kind of arc so far. And so yeah, we're basically gonna have to wait and see where the series takes me next, but that's kind of my thoughts, my kind of update so far. And now let's get into my recommendation for the week. And once again, won't you know, it's a musical, or not a musical, sorry, a song that I want to recommend because you know me, I'm listening to a ton of new music all the time, like every single day. And so this week's recommendation is a song from the group, as you know at my favorites, Loud Luxury, the DJ group Canadians, shout out. Um, and this time they're partnering with the artist, partnering with the artist named uh, Charlie on a Friday. And the new song is called Young and Foolish. And for what feels like two weeks now, the group's been teasing the song, playing the chorus on their Instagram, just giving us little tidbits of the song. And I wanna say that's when I got hooked. The track is released on Friday, so yesterday as I'm recording this. And basically it's just a really fun dance track with an awesome hook, an awesome melody, awesome lyrics. So you'll have to give it a listen. Let me know your thoughts. Is it your jam? Is it not? Um, also give me your thoughts on The Walking Dead. Did you like it as a series? Did you not? And NBA in-season tournament. What did you think of that too? Let me know about all of those um, sports spotlight and my recommendation. Let me know your thoughts on the, in the comments down below. Also feel free to leave me your recommendation. I'll check it out. If I like it, if I dislike it, maybe I'll put it in recommended, who knows, or my recommendation segment. We'll have to wait and see. And that's all the time we have for this episode of Sports Culture. So if you like the show, you dislike the show, like I said prior, any comments, leave them down below. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter or X, my Twitter is at Dayton underscore underscore Abbott, and my Instagram is Dayton dot Abbott. And as always, you guys, you know the drill. Take care, thanks for watching. See you next time. I don't know. I'm just gonna kind of like do our motions spotlight. Um, we are going to get into The Walking Dead, my update on The Walking Dead, because I've watched quite a little bit. Um, I'm almost at the end of the fifth season or sixth season, I believe. Um, so let's give my updates on some cons and some pros and also a favorite, a character I hate and a character I love. So starting off with the cons. Characters lost on the show suck. Um, you get to know them, they're gone, you like others, you don't mind losing certain characters, but anytime you lose a character in a TV series, um, it sucks, and so far we've lost a couple of them uh, that I've liked, a couple that I just didn't really care for, um, but losing a character on a show anytime just sucks, um, but it's, it's necessary to advance the plot. 
Um, certain romantic relationships so far I like and others I don't like. Um, certain characters I, I perceive fitting well with others and then um, the writers perceive certain other characters doing um, fitting in another way as well. So certain romantic relationships are great, others I just disagree with. I just don't see it fitting very well, but that's, we'll have to see how it lasts and how it goes. Um, and so yeah, that's my kind of second con. And then now we're gonna get into my most disliked character so far. And this is not a harsh dislike, it's just in the certain choices that this character has made. And so far that's been Maggie for me. Um, she was very caring and very um, tough, and she still is kind of tough, but she's more stubborn now. Um, she's not as empathetic, it's seeming, towards um, not only Glenn, but um, the group as a whole. Um, and she just really is taking a leadership role in the group when I don't really s perceive her as a leader. Um, I could see other characters taking that step, um, but it's not up to me. It's up to what the writers have done, and so that's been my mis most disliked character so far. However, the pros. New characters we met through an advancing plot in a story means we get to form new bonds. Um, so characters die, characters come in. Uh, it's the pros and cons of a series, it's the pros and cons of the story. My second pro is that the plot is switching to a new enemy once again with a ton of mystery. We don't really know a whole lot, we're kind of learning through each episode, little bits and chunks and pieces, um, but there's a new character or a new sort of enemy to pin our interest on and that's what I'm also really excited about as a pro. My favorite character so far continues to be a toss-up between Glenn and Carl as um, they both still continue to be balanced characters and not only the choices they make but the way they act in the group and the development they've undergone in the series so far. Um, Glenn has just is a well-rounded individual, he can fight, he has that empathetic emotional side to him um, and Carl has become less stubborn, more empathetic, more caring, uh, more forgiving, he's shown a ton of maturity in the series. Um, which I really enjoyed his kind of arc so far. And so yeah, we're basically gonna have to wait and see where the series takes me next, but that's kind of my thoughts, my kind of update so far. And now let's get into my recommendation for the week. And once again, won't you know, it's a musical, or not a musical, sorry, a song that I want to recommend because you know me, I'm listening to a ton of new music all the time, like every single day. And so this week's recommendation is a song from the group, as you know at my favorites, Loud Luxury, the DJ group Canadians, shout out. Um, and this time they're partnering with the artist, partnering with the artist named uh, Charlie on a Friday, and the new song is called Young and Foolish. And for what feels like two weeks now, the group's been teasing the song, playing the chorus on their Instagram, just giving us little tidbits of the song. And I wanna say that's when I got hooked. The track is released on Friday, so yesterday, as I'm recording this. And basically it's just a really fun dance track with an awesome hook, an awesome melody, awesome lyrics. So you'll have to give it a listen. Let me know your thoughts. Is it your jam? Is it not? Um, also give me your thoughts on The Walking Dead. Did you like it as a series? Did you not? And NBA in-season tournament. What did you think of that too? Let me know about all of those um, sports spotlight and my recommendation. Let me know your thoughts on the, in the comments down below. Also feel free to leave me your recommendation. I'll check it out. If I like it, if I dislike it, maybe I'll put it in recommended, who knows, or my recommendation segment. We'll have to wait and see. And that's all the time we have for this episode of Sports Culture. So if you like the show, you dislike the show, like I said prior, any comments, leave them down below. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter or X, my Twitter is at Dayton underscore underscore Abbott, and my Instagram is Dayton dot Abbott. And as always, you guys, you know the drill. Take care, thanks for watching. See you next time.